Hey everyone, it's Katie at Bobby Hair Studio and today I'm going to show you how I took this natural black with some black box dye in the ends to this super super blonde and this is the raw lift untoned. We did something fun with the toner but I'll show you that later. So let's go over my clients before. She naturally has like level two, three hair. Her hair is very, very dark as you can see. It matches the color of the black cabinets next to us and she has previous hair color history in here. She said the last few inches are likely the actual black box dye because she likes to experiment with her hair at home, but she has let her hair grow out on its own for the last like year and a bit. So we did a test strand, it turned out beautiful. So we knew that today her hair would be capable of lifting to where we wanted her to lift to. So we are starting with Blonde Me today and we are using two scoops of that because we're gonna be needing to go through these bowls really quickly. And we're going to be mixing with 20 volume and seven volume. So at first we're gonna be mixing a little bit more of the seven than we are with the 20. And we will be leveling up our developer as we go so that she's eventually just 20. We're also going to be using this cool additive because she has very dark hair with a very warm undertone. So that's gonna to help tone a little extra as she lifts today. And this is what it looks like. So let's get started. I have sectioned her into four sections and none of the sections are wider than the foils that I am using. I'm also using a paddle board and I'm using a power painter brush by Framar. These are both very important tools because the power painter brush loads on a lot of product and it's got very strong but soft bristles that will move the hair around and you can get really even proper saturation with this brush. It's one of my favorite ones. And the paddle board is there because it helps me to properly, I hate this word, but penetrate through the hair uh, from the top to the bottom. And this is better than just putting it onto a foil and laying the color on because then you'd have to take extremely paper thin sections if you were to just lay hair onto the foil and paint down from just the top side. What this uh, paddle is doing is it's allowing me to coat the underneath side of the hair and the top side of the hair at the same time. And I have really consistent um, application and lift that way because I'm using the paddle. It also helps with your wrists and everything like that. So if you have never used a paddle, try using it. It actually really speeds up your day and makes sure that everything's really consistent. My sections are quite thin, but the most important thing about them is that they are consistent with each other. If you have thick sections and thin sections, you're gonna have an inconsistent lift, which means you're gonna have some orange areas and some white, white areas that will probably be prone to breakage. So when you're doing a platinum card like this, you wanna make sure that your consistency of your sectioning and your lightener and your application is the same all the way throughout the head because you're trying to get the same color everywhere throughout the head. This is not the time to play around with different consistencies every time you mix your bowls. This is not a balayage where you want dimension. You want everything to be the same shade. And it's extremely hard when you're doing that, especially with a client like this who has a previous history of home coloring. And when someone's home colored their hair, you don't know the application that they used. You don't know the product that they used. You don't know how long they left it on and how many times they've overlapped some areas. So you're trying to get everything to one color, but there's multiple colors going on in there at different places. It can be a little bit splotchy. The ends are going to be a little bit darker because they're going to have been coated a few more times. So even though most of her hair is virgin, it's those last few inches on the ends that are not. And um, I noticed while I had lifted the hair that there were areas where you could see where her color had been applied to and some of them where that hasn't been applied to. So that does make it a little bit more challenging, which is why it's a color correction. And that's why you wanna be as consistent as possible on your end of things. So it makes your job a lot easier later on because we apply bleach three times today. So this is how I do this all the way through the head very, very saturated in the hair and I'm working all the way up. And as I go, I am leveling up my developer so that it speeds up to catch up with how quickly everything has lifted in the first section that I did. So I'm starting with the back and I'm gonna do the back two 
bottom corners so that worst case scenario I can wash them out and leave everything else in if I need to. And here is a time lapse of how I'm applying here. It's basically the same thing over and over again. So I'm not going to be showing you guys the entire thing of this first part of my application, but it gives you an idea of what I'm doing. I'm also making sure to stay uh, half an inch away from the scalp because I'll be applying bleach to that later. And the reason why I'm staying farther away from that, if you're kind of new to hair, is because the scalp is hot and it's going to make the lightener uh, move a lot faster and lift a lot faster. Also, right here, I wanted you to see that my sections are very consistent. They're very clean and even. And what I like about this, when you fold in those sides, you can really see those little sections there. So I'm able to track them really easily. Here is the whole head foiled. I did both the back sides right up to the top and then I did both of the sides. And what I did was when I moved from the right side, I had gone over onto the left side a little bit right here and then finished up the left side coming upwards. Now I can fold over these pieces because otherwise what's left on the parting is left out into the cold air and you don't want that to happen especially if there's air conditioning in your salon because those top foils don't process as much as the other ones you want to insulate them and make sure that they are lifting to the same degree which means that they need a little bit of protection and warmth so layering them on top of each other while you're processing really does help just like this Right here, you can see that I'm checking my foils. It's important to be checking everywhere that you stopped and started. Whenever you started with a new bowl or moved from one side to another, I'm checking the integrity of the hair to see if it will stretch. It's not stretching, so that means it's quite healthy. I'm checking my first area to see how much it's lifted, and that's giving me a really good idea of how much the hair is going to lift at all because this took me two hours to foil. So when you're done your last foil, you check your first one and say, how much is this hair going to lift at all? Because after two hours, that bleach is not lifting any longer. So those first foils had lifted to a level nine. It was still quite yellow and golden, but I knew that that's the goal here. So every single foil, I want to lift up to where that first foil went. So that's why it's important to be checking all of your foils, see how they're doing, if they need a little touch up with a little extra stronger or fresher lightener to sweep up on top of them. But this is, this is a job about constantly checking over your work. And here, as you can see, I am now putting on the roots. The roots is just a 20 volume and blonde me mixture. And I did add the cool additive in there as well. And here you can see how much it's lifted and you can see the strong root line of where everything is meeting. And that gives me a really clear guide of what I'm supposed to do here. What I love about this method also is that it makes my bleach root application so fast. I'm done applying the bleach roots in 10 to 15 minutes because I'm using these foils as my sections. Everything's pre-sectioned out. I don't understand why a lot of hairdressers want to wash out and then reapply everywhere because as you can see these are strong lines but if I don't have everything sectioned exactly as it was when I applied them it's going to be kind of a mess to reapply later after that bleach has been washed out. So what I'm doing now is I'm applying while I have these foils in because her hair is not done processing yet and so this is the right time to do it. When her hair is one to two levels away from being perfect this is a good time to apply this because her hair is gonna catch up so quickly. And those foils still have a little ways to go. And this is where patience comes into play here because you might be one or two levels away and think, oh, I only have 10 minutes left. No, girl, you have quite a long ways left because that's when the bleach really starts to slow down. And when those orange areas are gonna be really slow at lifting past that orange area, past that gold kind of zone into that yellow area that you want it to be at. Then my next step is to pull out every single foil from the first section that I started with and reapply with 20 volume and blonde me on top of any areas that need to be lifted a little extra, which is honestly every single area here. And I'm doing that from where I started down to where I finished. And then I, you can see actually right here how much of this bleach I actually scraped off of her hair because it was, you know, old and not working anymore. Reapply which gives a little more strength while her roots are processing. Then I take the cap that I used and just protect her hair from any of that air conditioned air. 
And now you can see how bright we actually got her. Her ends still have a little bit of that staining here, but this is an extremely beautiful lift for what we had started with today. A previous history of some box dye in there and having naturally black hair, her hair lifted so well. You can even see underneath that, yes, there is a little bit of banding there. It's not gonna be 100% perfect with this amount of work, even though I was constantly checking on her hair. We didn't want to compromise the integrity of her hair because she had zero breakage. It, it, it did so well. And this is the nice thing about having a very coarse, dense, thick, natural hair is that it will have the integrity to withstand something like this. So here again is her raw lift. If we wanted to tone her all platinum blonde, I can go over what kind of toning I would do for that. But what she wanted today was she wanted a blonde into a tip dye that was very soft and blended looking. But the color she wanted at the ends was like a light brown. Initially, she wanted to do platinum to black. But then when she came to her appointment, she decided she wanted a beige bright blonde to a light brown kind of reverse ombre kind of situation. And I'm like, that's fun, that's a challenge. Um, and I asked her three times, I'm like, you sure you wanna do that? Cause it can look a little bit like someone hadn't quite lifted your ends all the way and you have some color staining in there. And she's like, no, I like the look. She showed me the photo of the girl that she liked the look of and was like, okay, that's fine. And so even though it's not my personal preference and probably not a lot of your guys' personal preference, I'm doing what the client wants because she is the one paying. <laughs> so, what we're doing here is we are using a mixture of 8-46 and 9-1 up on her roots. And what the 846 is gonna do is it's going to blend her hair and it's going to neutralize the color from this really, really yellow color. It's a little bit more yellow in real life than it is on camera. But the 846 is an eight beige chocolate. And the 91 is a nine ash. And that's gonna control all that yellow in there. Now this is, where I made a mistake because we end up having to strip out a bit of that toner up in the roots because it went a little bit too dark. Um, if I were to reformulate this, I'd probably just do a 9.5 and a 9.1 and I do two parts of the 9.1 to one part of the 9.5. And then what we did is we applied this for the first couple of inches and then I combed it through towards the ends so that we can get a really soft blend between this color and the brown. Because if you're a hairdresser, you may know that blending a tip dye in can be very difficult because you can end up with really patchy results where like you can see where the, the brush strokes end. So that was my big fear of today is, are we gonna get really obvious brush strokes at the ends of her hair with that brown color? So the way to avoid that is to first put on your light color because it will work as something that dilutes your dark color apply it through and brush it down and then apply your darker color into the ends and use your hands to kind of swoosh it upwards and blend it into the light color. As for my dark color formulation, I'm using a 7-65, which is a level seven chocolate gold with a little bit of 6-0. And it might sound like I'm using a really dark color here, but her hair is wet and it's wet hair dilutes the toner a bit as well as that previous toner that I put in also is diluting it a little extra too. So I'm going really, really gently with this color here. And even though it sounds like a really dark formulation, we're not leaving it on for the full processing time. And we are trying to blend it into diluted hair as well, just to pr like to give that really soft blend from one into the other. So when I had rinsed out her color and blow dried a little bit she was like i feel like the top is too dark so i just went in with a clarifying shampoo and a little bit of lightener just to kind of pull out that old toner and i gave her a purple shampooing and then it was the perfect color now if this were my choice to do her toner i think my favorite toning combination would have been first to pre-tone her ends because they had a little bit more of that warmth from the staining from her box dye I would have pre-toned that with probably a 9-1 and left it on for like 15 minutes. And I, I would have used a 13 volume. And a 13 volume is gonna provide a little extra lift, which is what's actually in the ends formula here. I used a six volume on the toner in the roots here and a 13 in the ends to provide a little bit of that extra lift and hold into that color. So had it been my choice, 9-1 and 13 volume in the ends, and I probably would have used a nine dash sorry nine and a half dash nine eight which is a violet red 
and a little bit of 811 and probably a level 9-55. Um, the 811 being a ash ash and the 55 being a gold gold. So it's a double pigment. And what that would have created would be a really pearly, beautiful, almost slightly pinkish color of platinum blonde. And I think that that would have been my favorite result. I even tried to talk her into doing some kind of beautiful moonstone color. And if she wanted like tip dye to do maybe a little bit stronger of a pink or a purple into the ends, but she wanted this look, that's fine. I think it looks actually really cool and really fun. It's kind of editorial looking. I think it's a little bit trendy too. I think she's jumping up onto a trend that will be coming up soon. So if in a few months, <laughs> people are doing blonde to light brown ends, uh, please do credit my client for finding that picture of that girl who did that and being like, oh my God, I'm gonna start a trend because this is super cool. Anyways, let's jump ahead to my final results here and uh, we're gonna do two stars and a wish. And if you guys haven't you know, seen my channel before, um, I do obviously hair tutorial videos, but I'm also very honest about the results and I like to do uh, exercise called two stars and a wish where I give myself um, two affirmations and a critique on how I can do better in the future. So this is her final result as it's just blow dried nice and straight. It's a super creamy beautiful color. It blends beautifully from the light into the dark. The dark isn't my personal preference but my two stars and a wish. My first star is we got her so light and she had no breakage. It looks amazing. My second star is that her hair is so shiny and I really liked my formulation for the ends because I was scared that it was gonna go really orangey or very dark. It's a beautiful soft golden brown. And my wish would be that instead of doing the 846 and the 91 that I just maybe did 94, 955 and 91 for her blonde formula from roots to ends and then put on the brown formula within the ends. I think that would have been a little bit better let me know what you guys think. Did you like this transformation? Did you learn anything? And what would you do if you had this head of hair in front of you? Please also remember to like and subscribe. It's the best way to support this channel to bring forward more free education for hairdressers and hair enthusiasts. Have a great day, guys. Thank you so much.